Love finances, the other F word, and want to support the show? Become a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash FTOFW. You'll get special features, a shout out on the air, and early releases. Or if you prefer, pick up some merchandise at finances, the other F word.com. As fantastic a CFP as Mel O is, as wonderful an attorney as I am, and as good as Stormy is at whatever it is he does, please do note that anything said in our podcasts are our opinions alone and are not meant to be taken as financial or legal advice. Welcome to Finances, the other F word, a Gen Xer podcast for musicians and music lovers, where we discuss money and music without all the pretentious bullshit. Here are your hosts, Zoe Terry, attorney at large, Stormy Andrews, founder of Yoko Local Marketing, and Mel O, certified financial planner and author of Finances, the other F word. Listener discretion is advised. Hey guys, welcome to Finance is the Other F Word. And today we are talking about the US power grid. Now, before you stop and <laughs> turn us off and don't listen to this, you guys need to understand what the fuck is going on with their power grid because it's scary shit. Not to mention, this is the second attempt that we've done to try to record this. And we keep having electronic glitches, which I think is just par for the course. And so we're going to fucking do it come hell or high water. Zoe's been into deposition for eight hours and looks rough as hell. I've been doing revenue projections for six hours and I look rough as hell. Plus I have a stylish face wound. So for those of you who are on YouTube, uh, this is not a zit. This is a stylish face wound. I was uh, rescuing a toddler from a pit bull's mouth and I got... I got a, a stylish face face wound, but real quickly before we get started, I just wanted to give a shout out to Skip Melton of NOLA here and there transportation in New, uh, New Orleans. My friend Marianne and I, we went there, you know, we did New Orleans, the trip was here and there, um, but Skip was awesome. He made sure that he always took care of us and picked us up and dropped us off at all of the right places. So if you guys are in the New Orleans area, make sure that you holler at him at 504-234-2048. He's a super cool fucking dude. And with that, motherfucker, let's talk about the power grid, right? I got the power. Okay, we're gonna to get to that here in a minute. Mm -hmm. Zoe will Zoe will come in, but this is this is very exciting stuff. You guys believe it or not, this is very going to be very informative. But regardless, here we go. So we're just gonna start off with some facts. Um, I love we, facts, me facts, uh, facts with numbers. So facts with numbers. Cool. Here we go. Hang on so, a minute. Uh, you see, did you have one? Okay, yeah. so we had one. Now we're clear to go. So our electronic, uh, our, our electric grid dates back to 1882 when Thomas Edison, who you might remember from the Men Who Built America series, how could had, I not remember? I know had created the direct current, and Nikola Tesla, who was one of his uh, people that worked under him, created alternating current, and alternating current started becoming the preferred model. But because Chase had actually backed. Um, had actually backed Edison, he came in and he basically drove the company that had the patent, had Nicholas patent and, and ran it into the ground so that he be ended up becoming the owner of the patent. So basically he fucked Edison to get the alternative um, alternating current. Yeah. And so again, you guys, so, so much of the stuff as we're talking, I'm going to keep coming back to all these things because as we go through all of these shows, there's so much shit that is interconnected. It's fucking ridiculous. So let's just get into some boring quick facts. So in 1965, New York had a major blackout and it left 30 million people without power. Um, and because of that, they created, which fucking cracks me up, they created a voluntary association called NERC, which is the North American Electric Reliability Council. You nerd. All, nerd, all I hear is nerd. nerd. That's all I, which I mean, they're voluntary, you know, energy councils. So I think that that's probably pretty fitting. And in 1978, legislation was passed to partially start deregulating the sector, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. And then in 1992, the Energy Policy Act further allowed deregulation. 
and they broke up the different markets from wholesale market to retail markets. And so they separated the two of them out. And the whole point of that was that it was supposed to promote uh, competition and um, cheaper prices. But as you'll find out, and if you refer to episode number 258, Texas deep freeze that we did from the big winter storm that happened in Texas, I think it was at the beginning of February of this year, mm -hmm. and it knocked everything out. Um, we talk about how, in fact, in California, it did the exact opposite. So not only did it become more reliable, it actually got more expensive, and so the thing is, is that like what happened in Texas is, is that they had all of these private companies, but they didn't upkeep with the, the grid. And so the, it failed miserably. Plus they had done some other shit. Go back and listen to that episode. It was some crazy shit like Texas. All right, man. Like, I don't know what the fuck. In 2005, we had another Energy Policy Act come out that designated the Department of Energy's Federal Energy Regulator Commission as the authority of generating power and transmute, um, transmute, trans, trans, the fuck am I trying, trans, transporting it, you know, doing electricity through transmission. Trans oh, yeah. transportation or transmission? One of those things. It starts with a T. It's, you just fill in the word there. It's one of those things. Whatever, whatever you want. Absolutely. You know, trans transvestite. Tramp, exactly. Whatever you want to do. Tramp stamp. Tram stamps, and then we have local uh, local governments that are are dealt um, that deal with the the more localized energy. So we're going to talk about that in a second. Now, I did not know this, and I feel pretty stupid about it. But the thing is, is that I honestly did not. Do you know how energy is actually generated, Zoe? Uh, usually out of my bottom. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about energy that's usable? It's quite usable. No, I I I'm ashamed to say I don't. I didn't know. fucking either. So check this out. Most mm -hmm. energy is generated because, you know, we in, in Vegas, we have the Hoover Dam. So I just assumed everything came from the Hoover Dam. Oh, no, no. It doesn't work like that at all. In fact, most energy is generated by burning fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. And some, right, now I feel dirty because I thought that was what nasty <laughs> factories did. You are dirty. I know. <laughs> but I thought that's what nasty factories did. I didn't know that, like, you know, heating and cooling my house was actually from coal and, and uh, uh, other stuff. And some natural gas and some renewable sources are in there as well. And then what happens is, is that it, when it leaves the, the energy plants with the fossil fuels, it goes to a transformer, those big ass transformers. And what they do is they, they increase the voltage and then they boost it up. And then they send the voltage through the power, through those huge, huge, um, uh, energy poles that you see, like if you're going on a cross country drive, you look up on the hill and there's these massive fucking energy poles. And then Islands. what? Are they pylons? I I didn't come across that in my uh, research, but could be. I I like to go with a big ass electricity poles. Okay, I think that's probably the technical term. So yeah. carry on. I was just trying to sound smart. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, and then what happens is it goes back through transformer and it gets converted down, and then from there it goes through and it is put on the the electricity wires that you see going down like the freeway, just the smaller ones, and then it's delivered to your business or house. The problem with our grid which I did not know or realize. And, and there's been, the reason why I wanted to talk about the grid is because there is a whole bunch of heat waves and massive climate change type weathers that have, that have been going on right now, currently, as we record this, record this in Vegas, it is 115, which I know for a lot of people are like, yeah, that's Vegas. No, that's mm -hmm. not Vegas. Vegas is like 107, 108, maybe 110. Well, tomorrow it's going to be 117. And then the day after it's projected to be another 115. And we're coming off of a week of 111s, 113s, and 115s. So the power grid, and because of the, the recent attacks from Russia on the pipeline, which we're going to talk about here in a second, is really in the news right now. And with this massive heat wave that's come through the Pacific Northwest, that's hitting New York, that's coming through the Southwest, the, the energy grid is just getting tapped. And so I kept hearing about this. And I said, let me, you know, what the fuck? Is our, is our grid really that fucked up? Or are these people just, you know, crying wolf and all this kind of bullshit? Well, guess what, guys? It's really that fucked up. So hold on to your horses. Now, at the start of the 20th century, there was 4,000 individual electronic utilities uh, plants, and they all operated separately. But after World War II, what happened is, is that they began to connect them and form a much larger grid. And the reason why they did that is because they were trying to connect over a wider 
um, a wider space. They were trying to be able to have some of the other power plants be able to kick in and contribute when a certain location had, you know, peak peak times or needed peak energy. And so all of this kind of started coalescing in this lower 48 state electronic grid that we have. Now, every time you see a little power line by the side of the road, chances are that that power, that power line, those sets of power lines are at least over 30 years old. And when you see those huge, huge ones, the big ass power lines, those are usually over 40 years old. So just so you guys can understand how aging the infrastructure is. And so when they started putting this, all of this fabric of all of these uh, different things together, we ended up having um, a connection, but having three separate regions. We had the Eastern section, the Western section and Texas, because Texas, as we talked about in episode 258 said, fuck you guys, we don't want your energy. We don't want you to have our energy. And most of their energy comes from uh, oil and gas there. The problem is, is that during the deep freeze, all of those pumps froze up and they needed water and then they froze up and then not a fucking damn thing happened. And a lot of people died and froze their balls off and it was really shitty. Go back to that. Now, the U.S. power grid currently-ish, uh, as of 2016 numbers, is made up of about 7,300 power plants and nearly 160,000 miles of high-voltage lines, and then millions of miles of the lower-voltage lines you see, and tons of transformers, and it connects about 145 million customers, and this was as of 2016 numbers. And again, so most of the, the electricity is produced by conventional services, oil, coal, nuclear, and natural gas. We'll talk a little bit about renewals here and um, why we're finding that we're caught in this. The, the money's really amazing with this, you guys, because what's happening is that we're getting caught in a loop and we're looping and looping. And because of that, we can't get anything done. And, and we'll explore that here in a second. And it's some um, crazy bullshit. So the network is covering the, the lower 48 states and the redundant design was supposed to uh, help keep stability and reliability. And, you know, that's kind of questionable. And most power companies that create electricity, they are, they create electricity, but then they send it out. But then there's a couple of them that are in the United States that are vertically integrated. So for those of you who are not familiar with that term, that just means from start to finish. They do everything with the product. And so they create it, they distribute it, you know, they send it to your house, they bill for it. Literally, it's vertically integrated. And then we have a couple they kiss host you afterwards. Like what? They kiss you afterwards. That's that exactly. Give you their real phone number, which is nice. <laughs> which is nice. And so we have other wholesale markets that are in the North, uh, Northeast, Midwest, Texas, and California. And they're the only reason I mentioned them is because they're kind of a hybrid between a retail market and then a public utilities market. And those are known as independent service operators. And so those are relevant because that's what we're seeing going on in California right now. And we're seeing happening in Texas still. Now, when you're talking about a traditionally, traditionally regulated market, that would be like Vegas, right? We have NV Energy, fuck it. Like you can't go anywhere else except NV Energy. That's where you get your power from. So they grant them natural monopolies to in certain areas of the United States where they say, okay, this is going to be the power company that represents this location, period. There's no competitors. We're going to grant you the natural monopoly. And the reason why is because the infrastructure that we have, our grid is, is, is in need of such desperate repair that it takes a monstrous size company to be able to afford the repairs. Right. Okay. So they grant them a natural monopoly and they say, Hey, you know, we're just going to let this one go. I'm going to take a drink of my beer. Cause it's been a long day. Oh, that was, that was good. Ooh. Hope you guys are enjoying one too unless it's like nine in the morning on Monday and you're listening to this on your way to work, probably not having a beer would be good. But even then, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're not know. judging. We're not judging. Not at all. Not at all. And so what we saw is we saw Texas, California and the Northeast, they started to allow competitive retail suppliers of energy move into the space. And now we have about 18 different states, including also, um, and including Washington, D.C., that have introduced some type of real, uh, like a retail choice where 
they have some kind of control over the contract that they have, and they can have some kind of control over where the energy is derived. So if you're a tree hugger and you want only renewable energy, then through these different retail contracts, you can do that. And you're probably going to pay a little bit more for it because we're going to talk about why that is here in a little bit. And so again, going back to the, with this retail structure is that what we had in seeing in California, what we've seen in Texas is that in Texas on our episode number 258, there's electricity companies down there who were saying, switch over to us and we're not going to charge you any uh, electricity for two days. So the whole weekend is just electricity free. It's like cell plant, right? And the thing is, is that when they did that, you would have these people like cell phone plans, if they don't put you under contract, which the, the retail power companies didn't, is they would just jump and jump and jump. Well, then what happens is, is that the these private companies were supposed to take that money and they were supposed to invest in the grid to keep the grid afloat and they didn't. And then that is the debacle we saw with 200, uh, with an, an episode 258 with Texas. And so right now, when we're looking at uh, fossil-based fuels, they make up currently about 60% of all of our nation's power, which mm -hmm. that shocked me. And then you have, while nuclear power accounts for about 20%, and we're going to find out here in a minute that renewable energy accounts for about 21%, but it is growing. But this is where we're going to start looping, you guys. And this is why I want you to understand the stuff that's going on, because understanding money is not just talking about what stocks you should buy. Understanding money is understanding the pitfalls of what happens when you get yourself into a cycle. You know, a lot of times in my industry, uh, well, not a lot of times, we look at the economic cycle and then we look at, you know, what is our, our shift? Are we going from, you know, growth to value? Are we going from value to growth? Do we need to go to defensive? What are we cycling to? And what you'll find as you listen to the show is that so much stuff, it starts co compounding on each other and you start really understanding and have a better understanding how all of the money interlocks. And that's really what I'm trying to get you guys to. So solar, specifically in Vegas, right? You would think everybody should have fucking solar panels on the roof because it's hot as bloody balls, right? Right. And sunny most of the time. However, utility companies have been pissed off about it and they've been fighting against it because they consider that net metering. And so in Minnesota in 1983, regulators required that utilities buy any excess power that's created by solar users back from the, the customers at the full retail rate of electricity. And the energy companies were getting pissed about this because they were saying, look, they're connected to our grid. If we're buying their energy back from them at full retail prices, but they're still using our grid when the sun doesn't shine or if they're not storing their electricity. Because remember, the way our grid is set up now, nobody stores electricity. Now they're trying to move to that. They're trying to get batteries. But can you fucking imagine? And not to mention the way electricity is produced is that it's produced only when it's needed. So it, it, everything kind of kicks on when the grid starts getting stressed. And then when maybe the grid's not stressed, we're just having, you know, a mild fall or something like that across the nation, it's producing, it could be producing way more electricity, but there's nothing in place to store it. There's, there's the, the grid is too archaic to even implement that shit, which is fucking insane when you think about it. But the energy companies are pissed because they're saying, look, man, I understand you got solar, but when the sun doesn't shine, you still use our electricity, but then you're not paying for the maintenance of the grid. And so that's where the energy companies are coming in and saying, no, fuck that. That's bullshit. You can't do that. And so what's happening is that all of this pressure of, of switching off of the grid and going to solar, but then actually hurting the grid if you switch to solar is starting to kind of cycle upon itself right when the economy is coming off of COVID. And it's the most dependent on inexpensive energy. You have smaller companies that are trying to get on their feet. And if all of a sudden, you know, the, the uh, electric bills went balls out, it's going to fuck them. Right. And so if you think about the cable companies, so back in the day, Cable was expensive as fuck, you guys. Like when it first came out, I mean, I, Showtime, I remember in the early 90s, Showtime, HBO was like 30 to $50 a month. Right. Um, oh, yeah, it was fucking stupid. And, and then basic cable was like $60, $70. And so what happened is you had the cable companies go out and they went and they made all of these very, very high priced licensing contracts. We've talked about licensing rights a thousand times on here. And they're like, hey, we want to be able to have the uh, ability to show this NBA game. And so we're going to pay you a fuck ton of money for it. 
Well, then what happened is, is that as cable started falling out of favor and we see Netflix start coming on, the cable companies are still on the hook to pay all of those fees, but they have people leaving and cutting the cord from cable. And so you have that thing where the, it's the kind of the same thing where, where they need your money the most, but people are kind of leaving them in, in mass growth. And so this is what's happening with solar is that they're saying, okay, it's great. You can produce your own energy, but we still have a grid system that's falling into decay and who the fuck is going to pay for it? Well, who the fuck indeed. Right. And so we have on top of all this bullshit, you guys. And, and when I first started doing this research, I was like, man, maybe our grid system is not that bad. And then by the end of this, I was like, we're all going to fucking die in a heated a pool of our own fucking sweat because at some point it's going to start hitting 125. I think the Death Valley um, early, I think it was earlier this year, maybe last year, recorded the hottest temperature on earth recorded. It was, it was, and that's like right, that's like right down the street from us. Mm -hmm. And so on top of all of this bullshit and everything else we have going on, and I haven't even gotten to the bad stuff yet, we have bureaucracies between the state and local governments that's fucking up everything. So let me give you guys an example. There was a project, there is a project, it finally got approved called Trans West Express Transmission Project, and it's a 700 mile line that allowed for wind energy that was uh, created in Wyoming to be transferred through Arizona, transferred to Arizona, California, and Nevada. And it took them 15 years to get the permits necessary to put in the wind energy pipeline. 15 fucking years. Do you know how much technology has changed in 15 years? By the time you fucking get all that shit, everything you tried to, to build and got permits for, now everything's fucking changed. This is the bureaucracy at work. And then, of course, we have Democrats and Republicans like whooping out their dicks and fucking arguing with each other over stupid bullshit. While in the meantime, you know, if anything happens, those assholes are going to be totally fine and, and cool and cock bags anyway, and I don't want to get on that. So what, what we have now is we have uh, blackouts that are coming through, again, through New York, who's in the middle of a heat wave, and California who's in the middle of a heat wave and a drought still because California cannot fucking get out from under a drought every fucking summer. California's in a drought again. And they've started turning off um, the, the energy. So what happens is, is that they, it starts pulling too much of the grid and they think that the grid is going to collapse. And we're going to talk about why that is here in a minute. And so then what they do is they take certain localities and they go, okay, we're just going to put you in a blackout for a couple of hours so we can redirect power somewhere else. So in New York, in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, they sent out, the, this was just recently, the power company sent out blocks of dry ice to people who were experiencing blackouts because they had no air conditioner. Now, what the fuck are you going to do with dry ice? Now, if you put a fan over it, it's nice and cooling, but there's no electricity. You're in a blackout. So you literally have a fucking cooler of dry. Ice. What the fuck are you going to do with that? Sit around it like it's a damn television in the 50s and and just lick it. Yeah, you know, don't listeners don't listen to Zoe. Don't <laughs> don't lick that shit. Ne ne never listen to me. I mean, never. that's no true words have ever been spoken. Do not listen to Zoe. Mm -mm, no. The point is, what the fuck are you going to do with dry ice? I mean, you know what, if I have a chemist out there who's listening, please educate me and tell me how the fuck dry ice is going to help anybody in the middle of a damn heat wave. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know if you put water on dry ice. Anyway, I just saw that. I was like, this is some stupid bullshit. And then on top of all this, you have routine maintenance that needs to go on with the grid. And if it's a little tiny fix, you know, they might put your electricity out for 24 hours. If it's a bigger thing, then it might go out for farther. And of course, as these things continue to fail in different patchworks of the United States because of heat waves, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, then what happens is, is that more and more of the grid goes down, which means that it has to pull from other sections of the grid, which now is having stress put on them. And again, as I just mentioned not too long ago, that our grid system, just the, the wires and shit, this shit is over 40 years old and it's, on it's, on, it's above ground. It's open to elements and it's open to a whole bunch of stuff we're going to talk about. So with the renewable energy that's trying to come on track, we've already talked about the catch 22 that we're finding ourselves in with the solar play, which is crazy. But with that, we start, we're seeing that renewable energies are starting to become a, a greater source of power. And in um, 2020, 
21% of the U.S. electricity was generated by the renewable resources, and they are expecting that to double by 2050. So again, that sounds great until the wind doesn't blow and the sun isn't shining. Perfect example of that is Australia. Remember the fires? Shit, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was January 2020. That was the kickoff of this shit year that was 2020. And all of their solar panel panels didn't work because it blacked out the fucking sun because there was so much soot. Now take that even further. You remember, you know, back in like 81, Mount St. Helens er uh, erupted mm -hmm. and the ash went all the way around the world. So you take any big ass fucking volcano. And if we did move all the way to solar and then that motherfucker goes off, then we have no electricity either. So this is this is this this fucking push and pull that we have that we're trying to figure out like what the fuck to do with it. And so a lot of the a lot of people are trying to um, input in their their own solar panels. And we had here it was a big deal with I think it was Solar City and Warren Buffett, who's a big uh, stakeholder in Nevada Energy, was fighting the solar panels and all this other shit. And of course, his rationale is the fact that they're not paying into the grid. Plus, it's probably a little bit of profit. And I'm still really pissed off about him doing that. But solar power for 2020 created enough energy to power 18 million homes. So what we have now is we have Tesla coming online who are now selling battery systems that link up to the solar panels so that they can try to give an alternate um, to the traditional grid. So now let's talk about climate change because I did not realize how the heat waves were affecting electricity. I'm thinking, oh, people use the more air conditioner. It's stressing out the grid. That makes sense. Oh no, it's so much worse than that, you guys. So like I said, it, with California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and parts of Colorado, we've seen in the last two weeks that that um, degrees have, it has been over 100 degrees. Again, for Nevada, that's, you know, old hat, Arizona, that's old hat, parts of Utah, but Colorado, that's kind of a new thing. And in Oregon, last week, they recorded a temperature of 115 degrees. Now, for those of you who are listening in the Northwest, you hear what I'm saying. If you've never been in the Northwest, most every house up there does not have air conditioning. Because it's it's a mild climate, you have fans, you got a heater, of course, but you have no fucking AC. So my friends in the Pacific Northwest have been sweating their fucking balls off and they can't get away from it. What do you do? You open the window and then you let more heat in. I mean, you guys, it's crazy. And then again, we have expected 117 degrees that's going to be coming through. And so we have Texas and California that are experiencing a lot of this. And because of the devastational uh, winter storm that came through Texas, it was said to, it is said that it's cost, it has costed the state economy $130 billion. And a lot of those little power companies that were those individual service operators, the ISOs that I talked about earlier, are now bankrupt. Because Everything went to hell in a handbasket all of the right time. And of course, that storm in Texas left 5 million people, around 5 million people without power. And then in, in, in California just last week, and this is the most California thing I'll ever read to you, suggested that the residents wait to charge their electronic vehicles until off peak hours to save energy, which I just thought that was just the, the craziest shit I've ever read. And then, of course, now we have New York going through the, the power outages as well. And we have, you know, uh, people, the, the officials in California are saying that, hey, you know, we're convinced we can keep up with demands this year. And you have Texas saying, well, we keep having a whole bunch of problems. And so one of the things we covered in 258 is that it's not like you just turn back on the pipeline and then that shit just comes back to life. Now, you got to make sure that, that that doesn't blow. You got to make sure that there's no damage to it. It takes a whole bunch of stuff. So now what Texas is seeing across the state of Texas is that all, a lot of these power plants are failing in large numbers and they have no idea why they're failing. And so they're having to, to keep going and fixing them. And I would assume not being an expert in that field, that it has something to do with the winter storms. And the Texas grid operators just, they can't figure it out. And so we talked a little bit about the reason why they give the, the electric companies the power of monopoly, which you know, if you've listened to the show, I am not a fan of monopolies, but there's legitimate reasons. First of all, the cost of constructing the infrastructure and maintaining it, the actual price of trans, um, the transmission of the electricity and the distribution, and they need um, enough of a monopoly over the consumer that they can 
continuously um that they can basically have a captive audience we on the last show that we had we had chris bilek and he talked about in the movie theater um how those big 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 bag of popcorns that you know they sell you for four to seven dollars a whole huge bag of that is six cents and the reason why they can get away with that is because you can't fucking go anywhere and so they grant the isn't that crazy they grant the utilities a monopoly And then what happens is, is that they try to put all these other watchdog companies in there to try to regulate how much money that they can charge for electricity because electricity would be a human right. The problem is, is that if the cost to restructure, to to reconstruct our grid and fix our grid is up here, but you have to keep your prices down here, who the fuck is going to close the gap? Well, if the government which is part of what's happening now is trying to step in and do it. But then you have the the two sides fighting about that too. Okay, well, motherfucker, somebody's got to come up with the money or we're just going to all be sitting here dying our, in a, a sweaty ball death. And so then what you have is because of this, you have people switching to solar, which starts this utility death spiral all over again. And in the long and the short of it is that the fucking power grid doesn't get fixed. So now let's talk about all the fucking things that the heat is doing to our power grid right now. If the weather gets hot enough, power lines start to sag, which I did not know this because the metal inside of them expands. And then what happens is, is that when the lines start to sag, they start hitting trees and then they start fucking forest fires, Mm -hmm. which then takes down more utility poles, Mm -hmm. right? It's just this clusterfuck of hell going on here. And then what happens is, is that on top of all this is that power plants need copious amounts of water to cool their systems down. Well, if we have a heat wave coming through the water that they're getting from streams, rivers, natural sources like that is too hot to effectively cool down the actual power plants, which means that they don't run efficiently, which means that they then in turn have to work harder, which is the thing that we're trying to prevent right as everybody is trying to turn on their air conditioners more and more and more. And then that leads to droughts. And then when the water comes in, if it's cooler, once it goes through the system and it comes back out into the river, it's a lot of times it's too hot and it kills a lot of the indigenous animals i mean this is you guys this is fucking this is crazy when you really get into it and you start seeing how all of this shit is just like building on top of each other and then you have these huge combustion turbines that are typically in the middle of communities that only kick on in an absolute emergency well our grid is being tested so much that we have these combines uh, these turbines kicking in and then what's happening is that it's adding air pollution at a time when the air is stagnant because it's so fucking hot on top of all of this stuff. And then the heat's making everything more, uh, making every the just the power plants less effective in general. And then you have the natural disasters that come through hurricanes, blizzards, floods, and solar flares that can overwhelm our solar lines. And again, like we've I've mentioned before, we're talking about 30 to 40, probably 50 plus years old these grids are. And also the grids are above ground, which makes them very vulnerable and makes them very accessible for attack and open to the elements. And so a couple things they're saying that they're trying to do is that they want to firm up our, our infrastructure on our grid and they want to, um, they're starting to add batteries finally. Uh, and maybe it's just the, the technology that's just came online finally have given them an ability that they can do that, but they're trying to add batteries right now so that they can start storing this electricity for future use. They also have software programs now that are coming online that you can basically, um, the, like if you're not home, it's going to turn off your oven. So your oven's plugged in. So even though your oven's not running, it's using electricity. So what it does is it says, okay, Mel's out of the house from here to here. I'm going to turn off all the appliances, obviously, except the fridge. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn off all of the appliances. And then an hour before she comes home, I'm going to turn everything on. So when she comes in, and so what we do is if we are creating energy during the day, when people aren't using as much, then we're storing it. Then when they come home and the, the, later hours of the evening when most of the electricity is used the hope is is they can offset that and they're implementing uh it's all part of the smart grid which is this software package that i'm talking to you about where they're putting meters on houses and businesses 
and they're trying to get better at anticipating how much energy people are going to need. And they're putting sensors or they're trying to get the money to put sensors all throughout the grid so that if there is a potential problem, they can see it in real time and immediately get somebody dispatched out there to fix it or to cut the power to it until it gets fixed or something like that. And so this is, and, and the very last thing they're trying is that they're reaching out to customers saying, look, if we pay you, will you just not use as much energy from this hour to this hour? And they can volunteer to do that. So like for me, you know, I like it warmer. So if I had to bump my thermometer up, it's it's 80 in my house now. If I had to bump it up to 82 or three, I could probably do that very comfortably um, if need be. And so there's currently a plan right now that's that's being fought over in Congress as part of an infrastructure, the infrastructure thing. Currently, right now, the American Society of Civil Engineers, and I put all the resources in the show link, so fucking look at it or don't, you know, um, there's a funding gap. Uh, expected over the next decade of $200 billion. And currently right now, the White House in April freed up $8 billion to try to start boosting our grid's capacity. And then of course there's the, you know, and, I, and I'm not gonna get into the infrastructure plan that's going through, but they're asking for about $100 billion to try to start overhauling the grid right now and make us kind of more, um, be able to bring, you know, not burn as many fossil fuels and have renewable energy come into our grid system so that instead of burning coal and shit like that, then we can use more of the renewable. And so the very last thing that we need to talk about is a big one right now, cyber attacks, you guys. So in May, May of this fucking year, you might remember there was a ransomware attack on the Colonial Pipeline and it closed down the pipeline and the pipeline distributed, um, you know, it was, a. I had it here somewhere, but now I can't find it. It, it I had all of the states listed that it actually sent uh, oil down to, and there was a whole ransomware thing. They ended up paying them, then they kind of got busted. And now we're, we're finding out that that is from Russia. Mm -hmm. And so now dark side, Dark side is a name that they're calling themselves, um, and they're not saying they're from Russia, but the, apparently the FBI, CIA, however that works, has has traced it back down to Russia. Said, and this fucking pissed me off. They said that that they were not trying to harm anything; they were just simply trying to make money. And so they ended up cutting down the the pipeline, and they took the whole thing over. And so when we're looking at power lines that truly should be buried in the ground. So they're more effective sending transmission and they're not as exposed to different, um, you know, natural disasters and shit like that. That's all part of infrastructure. Plus it would help cut down on the cyber attacks. And of course, if you remember the cyber attacks, they asked for cash in crypto currency because cryptocurrency is not regulated. And for the most part, is not as trackable. So that goes back to our Bitcoin episode that we've done. We did the three-part series on that. So all of this stuff is interconnected. And I know it sounds like a crazy, boring topic, but you guys, there's so much shit that's going on right now that can totally affect the, uh, the economy. Uh, I mean, when you're a financial advisor, one of the things that you often use utility companies for is a haven in a crazy storm. So if the, if the, the market's getting fucking crazy, then you might go to defensive stocks, not like guns and shit, but like defensive stocks, like utilities, things that people need regardless of the market. Um, or economic cycle. And the thing is, is that if we, you know, it, it, at the very basic level, if you were saying, okay, I think that, you know, the market's going to go in the shitter, I'm going to move into a more defensive play. And then we have a massive cyber attack that hits our grid that affects all of the investors that are in that, that affects all of the businesses that rely on that energy for it to be inexpensive or reliable. And so all of this stuff just circles and circles and circles on top of each other. And that's why as boring as it seems, the US power grid is a big fucking deal. And you guys need to understand what we're up against because it's really shitty. But mm -hmm. the fun part is now is that Zoe with her raccoon eyes, because now I can see the group, <laughs> she is, she's going to make this funner and she's going to talk about some songs and then we'll cleanse your palate of that, that power grid thing. She's ready. She's excited. Oh, God, I'm so ready. So what I've got for y'all is some songs 
with some power. So I almost said I almost sang it, but I didn't. No, nope. don't shoot your load. I'm not. Soon. Oh, I lo- I do love shooting my load though. I, I I know you do. So I've got. Well, I was going to say ten songs with some power to them. Mm-hmm. Hello, puppy. <laughs> Hello, puppy, puppy. So but in fact, it. the last the last one is a little group which is going to bring us some joy. Hang on a little second. Oh, please do note the new manners that have come with with uh, with me. <laughs> it's we're, I'm, so, we're so proud of Zoe. Yeah, I'm spontaneously combusting uh, through lack of through excess gas. Anyway, first one, you know what's coming, don't you? Mm-hmm. The power by Snap. I got the power. I got the power. Okay. Da, now. Da, 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 da. Okay. Here's I the question. Break my heart. Yeah. Does he say it's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of heavy or does he say it's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of hectic. See interchangeable for me, depending on how I feel. Okay. I'm not not sure uh, what the actual lyrics are. What do you think it is? I've, uh, I've always sung hectic. It's getting, because it's getting kind of heavy. It's not getting heavy. It's a dance song, first of all. So, but hectic, maybe like, because there's a lot of beats going on or there's a lot of energy flying around. I swear to God, I always thought it was hectic. Okay, well, um, power snap. Here we are with the lyrics, and I'm going to. It's getting, it's getting. Okay. Drum roll. It's getting what? It's getting what? Oh, it doesn't even say it in the lyrics? Oh, here we go, here we go. Ah! It's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of heavy. It's getting, oh, fuck that. it's getting, getting kind of heavy. Dude, <laughs> who's on my side? Fuck that shit. Oh, no, no, wait. It's getting, it's even better. The next time it says it's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of hectic. So it does both. We're both right. We're both, oh, that's, that's oh, wonderful. That's, that's, that's the best. So that's number one. On then the that's like the song. only song. Like that for me would that's, be the end of my list. I mean, pretty much it goes downhill from there until the last sec- section. Number two, Power by Kanye West. Uh-uh. What? No, but, we're passing that. We're passing that. Okay, but don't forget that Mel does this lovely thing where she puts a little list together, uh, right, for Spotify. Do you still do that? Yes, um, I will. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, uh, you know, so you can have this, you can put this power list together um, and you will love it. And enjoy it with your beer on the way to work at nine in the morning on Monday. Especially this next one. We're here to serve. This This is a good one. Turtle Power, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Partners in Crime with a K R Y M E. Is that one Vanilla Ice did? Mm. Vanilla Ice did a song with yeah. teen, the teen, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtle. Heroes in a Half Shell. Half shell. Yeah, Turtle it's Power. One. Okay, I can, wow, that's a stretch. Okay, I would, I'm going to take it though. I'm going to take it because I still have some uh, grid, I have some leftover electric. Uh, electric grid stuff yeah okay and and i almost went also with any power ranger song um but you didn't i didn't but i'm still going to mention it (laughs) because me and the boys remember i have two boys we all know we used to have the power ranger album and we would listen to it in the car quite often and who knew there were so many Power Ranger songs and that you would could sing them so heartily in a in a car? So there's any Power Ranger song that you could pick too, but that's not even on the list. That's a bonus. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Number four, uh, Power to the People, Black Eyed Peas. I don't know that song. Me neither. So it's like discovering new music. We're here to. Uh, It'll be on the Spotify playlist. Everybody can enjoy it if you've never heard uh, it. As you know, we're here to educate as well as entertain. There so, you go. I uh, thought you were going to figure out your own tagline, but you pulled it out. I, I, I almost did. I had to stop and think. Yeah. Okay. Number five, you do like this one. Fight the power. Public enemy. Yep. That's a good one. Uh, number six, My Power by Beyonce. Also do not know that song, but it will be on the playlist. I'm sorry. I'm not part of the the beehive. So my bad. 
Um, I mean, I think she's amazing. Oh yeah. You know, but yeah. I just don't live and die by Queen Bee. No, but that's that's another one. Come at me, bro. So number seven, power by the temptations. I don't know it, but I love the temptations. So I think that I'm I've sure never if I heard heard it. I would love it. Well, so. I've never I've never heard that song either. So, so this will be yeah, every, every yeah, everyone's a winner so far. Yeah, so far. Oh, clearly. So far, two of them. Um, oh, this is a good one. Number eight, money, power, and respect, DMX. Don't know it either, but it's, you know, giving a shout out to the DMX. So, Right. Didn't he get in trouble for dog fighting? Oh, well, he's dead, isn't he? So He is dead. <laughs> You're right. So that's punishment enough. Yeah. So like Isn't he dead? He's dead. <laughs> He said, doesn't matter. What did he do? He's dead, right? Yes, yes I believe he did. <laughs> story. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Now, I don't know this one either. Maybe you do. Um, Soul Power, the Smashing Pumpkins. I'm not a big fan. I don't, I'm not a Billy Corrigan kind of, it, if it's not Bullet with Butterfly Wings, it just, uh, you know, he just sounds whiny to me. Mm-hmm. But he did go on The Simpsons and he was pretty, you know, he was a good, he was a good sport on The Simpsons. So good on him, yeah. Billy. He didn't whine and say, oh, you made me look fat and I've never looked like that. I don't think they, I don't think they let him have that many lines. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Then number 10, this is the best because. And she takes a drink of her cider and keeps the sense suspense. Yeah. Because the last category is the power of love. But did you know, and I guess I did, but didn't that there were three different versions of The Power of Love. There's Huey Lewis. Wait a second. Oh. Th- three different, I, I, I mean, three whole different versions of a song with the same title by numerous different people that all came out around the same time, 1984-85. So you had, yes, Huey Lewis and the News, mm-hmm. power, The Power of Love in 1985. You had the fantastic Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Power of Love, in 1984, I think. Was that off a of Welcome to the Pleasure Dome? Um, yeah, I think so. Big ballad. The power of love. Mm, I don't know. From All I know is Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. I'm like, I want to go to the Pleasure Dome. That sounds fucking amazing. Well, this was their kind of like their their ballad, but it right. was good. Uh, right. so that, that was version, uh, I mean, completely different, not versions, completely different. And then the third version was the Power of Love, Jennifer Rush, Air Supply, Celine Dion, Laura Branigan version, which was also 1984, 1985 time. So who knew? Everyone it, was more power of loving it. Everybody the, needed love. In, in the mid 80s. In so. the, the mid 80s. Yeah, that's crazy. So, oh God, how fantastic was that? Yeah, you guys, Zoe looks so at peace right now with her little list. And of course, I will start doing that. We haven't talked about music in a while, and we kind of wanted to get back to the original format to break up a lot of the financial stuff, even though obviously I love the financial stuff. Me too. But yeah, I know you do. I know. It's <laughs> exciting. And and I think it's important and it's very informative, but we wanted to get back to, fuck me, I like it. <laughs> we wanted to get back to kind of the original format of everything, but- you can always follow us on social media at Finances Other F Word. Stop by our website, financesotherfword.com, and you can pick up some merchandise. If you want to be a patron, you can find us on Patreon, TikTok. Help in there with a merch. YouTube. Oh, okay. I was, I didn't know. I thought you were having a stroke. Okay. YouTube. Uh, I, I, and- did, I did that earlier. <laughs> Yeah. During the during the eight hour deposition, don't worry. But no one saw because my camera wasn't fucking working. So, so conveniently, but yeah, you can find it. You can find us on YouTube, TikTok. You can find us everywhere your podcast. Pick up some merchandise. Follow us on finance. The other F word. Follow Lily Lou Mittens on Instagram. And of course, uh, if you guys have any feedback for us, you know you can slide into our DMs. And with that, we are out. This bitch. Bye-bye. Be sure to check out our Finances, the other F-Words playlists for each episode on Spotify.